Welcome back YouTubers and in today's episode I'm going to show you how to hack Arcadia, uh, a game from Imagine in the 80s and it was pretty difficult back then and uh, even more so with me getting older. Okay so first off we're going to um, load the, uh, the program and let's see what we've got. Okay so we've got a, a basic um, listing that's uh, clearly showing a, um, a splash screen and then it looks like here we've got a assembly language or machine code loader which was not uncommon back then with the sys256 which is hex address 100. If we want to see the listing in a more friendly style we'll open 1 comma 4 4 being the printer, command 1, list, print, hash 1, comma, space, and this forces a flush of the, the buffer itself, and then close 1. And here, as you might have seen it flicker on the screen, is where the listings appeared. Ignore the ready, and these control characters. Um, this is just the uh, internal communications to the printer for form feeds and line feeds and stuff. And here's the basic listing. Um, these first two somehow are related to um, interrupts and the cassette ports. Um, it doesn't seem to make a difference or a huge difference excluding those. But um, here we get to the main loader. So we've got a bunch of data, pokes, into system memory address 256 plus. What we're going to do is we're going to delete line 85 so that we don't execute the, the loader and we're going to run. So we've got the splash screen as you can see and now we're going to enter into the monitor which is where the, the game uh, would have uh, started to continue its loading process. And here we can see the loader. And it's a fairly straightforward assembly language loader. We set up the logical block system um, as one. The length of the file name is zero, so we're telling it to load the next um, file found on cassette. And these are the kernel routines that are called. I'm unsure why we're setting X and Y to FF, um, because the, the documentation says we set it for relocating code, but I can't seem to get it to work regardless. And the jump subroutine FFD5 is the kernel routine to finally load the program from cassette. And then we've got the final command here, jump to address $1003. What we'll do for the time being is we'll set a break point here at break at 113 and we'll return control back to the monitor. So let's continue and sys256 continue loading. I'm going to speed that process up you'll notice some screen corruption or appears to be screen corruption here this is uh, fairly common back um, in the day because of the the lack of memory available so additional code would be loaded into the screen memory and then it would be relocated into the correct parts of RAM uh, where it could be used. This was to ensure that you maximize the amount of memory available and that you could initiate it all within a load, particularly when you're overwriting the stack area, etc. So let's have a look at 1003, which is where we would have jumped to. Oops. We've got a jump into, mem uh, into screen memory at 1E00. So this is why you needed the assembly language program because if you tried to issue the second load from the basic prompt, this screen, this area of screen memory would become corrupt um, because obviously you're typing commands, etc. So let's have a look at what's happening. It's one zero zero three, one e zero zero. Sorry. So essentially, we've got a bunch of initialization code, um, both for internal variables or internal memory addresses and to move code around from the screen areas um, back into to memory. Um, we can ignore that for now. Now we know that the game has six lives. Um, so let's just go back 
to the game, let it execute uh, as normal. Okay, so press any key and we've got the number of lives up at the top. I don't know if you saw the them flash, but we've got one, two, three, four, five, and there's usually a six one there. So we're gonna use our usual tricks um, of searching in memory to 2000 for A906. So that's LDA six, let A equals six, or the accumulator. And we've got one hit at 17EE. Now looking at this piece of code here, doesn't look like a typical candidate for lives because we're not storing it immediately. And there seems to be a conditional branch here. So branch if not equal to zero, which it won't be. Um, yeah, this doesn't give me um, great vibes around there. So let's have a look at um, hunting for five lives. And we've got another hit at 17BC. So let's have a look at 17BC. Uh, let's get a step back a bit. So we've got load A, five, and then jump to 1638. Okay. But then we've also got above it a jump to the same address with a value of three. So could it be that the program intended three or five lives? Let's have a look at 1638. Again, Experience tells me that this isn't a routine that handles and storing lives, at least for initialization. Let's try one above, let's try seven. It's unlikely, but you never know. No, okay, so there's, there's no hits there. Thankfully with today's um, emulations and the monitoring tools, we have a few more tricks up our sleeve to try and find the, the live. So if we hit SC, this shows the screen and we know that the screen has been amended or adjusted to be 16 um, characters wide and 32 characters in height. So the developer of the programmer changed it more to, um, I believe they call it Tate, Tate, T-A-T-E, um, a portrait style screen that you'd see in the arcades. And you'll notice here we've got a bunch of at signs, which is clearly representing space on the screen. We've got um, T, 67101, um, or is that an L? No, that's an L. So T67L01 score. So we can see that the lives here are at the top, at 1E00, all the way through to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, to 1E05. And these greater than signs clearly representing the graphic for a ship. We can set a breakpoint on memory to see when this is um, when this is accessed or where it's decremented. So what I'm going to do is set a breakpoint when there's a store at 1E0 and the next one when we lose a life will be 1 at 2. So 1E02, which is this little, little fella here. Now if we look at the the breaks we've got, we set one at 113, we can get rid of that. So let's delete uh, breakpoint one and we've got a watch on 1E02. We're going to execute, ah, to continue. And we've already stopped. So it seems that that screen address has been written to with the value of 3E. Let's have a look at the memory address at 1E00 to uh, 1E05. So if you remember, we saw the these at signs. Um, this is an unprintable character, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then 3E looks like it's the character to represent the uh, user-defined graphic for the ship. And we're writing 3E back into the same memory address by the looks of it. So that doesn't quite make sense unless we're displaying the ships on every frame, which would be a bit um, uh, a bit intensive, not, not necessary, but not to say it doesn't happen. So uh, let's go back to the address 22B. So let's disassemble from 210. 22B was the, uh, the hit. 
oh it was the uh, the address before SDA that was the next address sorry load a with 3e store it at 1dff comma y and we can see from here that y is set to 0 3 so if you add 1dff with 3 you end up with 1e02 obviously um, we're looking at the code above there's already an rts instruction at 21 e echo so we can safely assume that's the end of a, another assembly subroutine this looks like it's dealing with lives and let's have a look what we've got here so load y with six so that could represent the six lives that we we spoke about then we've got uh, this command um, load accumulator with eight uh, seems to be a bit um, a bit glitchy doesn't it with the old uh, with the old mouse that's the joy of uh, advice for you um, so if we've got uh, if accumulator is equal to zero we're going to jump straight in at 233 which is the load accumulator again with zero and store it with uh, to overwrite that area I'm going to guess otherwise we're going to transfer the contents of, of a which we read from zero page dollar eight into X and then load the screen data with the uh, the ship graphic we're going to keep on going and then eventually we're going to overwrite with them um, with the zeros where we have no ship so I'm gonna go with Address dollar eight probably contains the number of lives. So let's have a look here. M dollar zero eight. And here we have it, zero five, which is how many lives that we did have left. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to delete all the breakpoints again. We don't have to, but um, if I keep hitting X to continue, we're going to break on every frame here. So it looks like the lives have been written every frame of the game. So we're going to delete breakpoint two now. I'm going to set a breakpoint on store $8 on that memory address. I'm going to continue. And it looks like, um, yes, we've already lost a life and, and gotten blown up. And it also looks like I'm still in warp mode. Um, okay, let's switch to warp off. And then let's have a look at memory address zero eight. eight. Four, we're down to four lives. Let's continue. We've lost another life. And we're down to three. So I, I think here, um, it's fairly safe to say that this is the number of lives and if we look at the address that we've broken on on both occasions at 10b5 let's have a look at the code that's occurring before them here we go we've got uh, the decorant command on 08 we're going to branch if it's not equal to 0 to 10a1 so we're going to jump back here Otherwise, we're going to jump to 1011, which I'm going to guess is the end end of game. So we're going to change this um, to be an aura, to or accumulator, to ensure that whatever this contents in memory, as long as it's not zero, it will always be positive without decrementing that instruction. So assemble 10B5 aura dollar zero eight and then let's disassemble that section of code again and as you can see here we've changed that now to or accumulator with the address dollar eight and it's also the byte for the opcode is zero five uh, thanks to a top tip from uh, i believe it was andy hewitt he suggested that the greater than command can also be used for poking um, so the more astute can put in uh, one zero b five zero five let's test it and 
Oh, it's over. Ah! Oh, come on. And it appears that we still have our remaining lives untouched. You can see here, there's no change. But let's make sure that it's generally working as just affecting the routine that writes the number of lives left to store. Okay, I think that's probably safe to say that we've now found infinite lies for Arcadia. Now, how do we put all this together? Now, for um, an emulator uh, such as this, which most of us will probably be using, uh, I'm just going to uh, delete the breakpoints for the time being here and reset the machine. Now then, we, we should prove that it works first, so let's load the game up again. Now that we're back into the game, let's just check to see if our pokes work. As you can see on the screen, we've got six, six ships remaining. Let's jump back into our monitor. And uh, I believe it was um, 10B5. So let's disassemble 10A0. And as you can see here, we've got 10B5 deck $0.08. And we can use the tip from Andy. Nice call, mate. Uh, 10B505, like so. And if we disassemble that code again, we can see that we've po indeed poked the memory address. And now if we continue with the game. We have infinite lives. And I think for most of us that would probably be more than sufficient. But as you know, I'm a bit of a completionist really. So let's quit. And let's load up our... Um, cassette again so here we go I'm going to delete line 85 um, so that's the line that contains sys256 so 85 delete and then run now if you remember the code is in address 100 here Let's go back to our notepad. So what we want to do now is enter our code before the jump address. So I'm going to move this over to the side for now. And we're going to assemble at 113 LDA hash dollar Zero five SDA dollar one zero B five. And then of course we need to patch in the original jump, which is the one zero zero three. If we disassemble at one hundred to one one B this is our cheat code that we just um, added and this is the uh, original jump address, but how does that help us? Thankfully, we can use a, another command uh, within the displaying memory. So we can press M, capital D, to decimalize the data from 100 to 11A. We don't want these Fs. Okay, so here we've got all the data in decimal form and I'm going to paste that here now if you have a look at the original loader you should see something very, very familiar 162 1 160 255 etc now then the last three bytes 76 316 is the jump instruction to 1003 in hexadecimal 
here, which also matches up here. And then we've got our additional code that we've loaded uh, from 10113, uh, sorry, which starts with A905, etc. So we know that this section here, 3221355, uh, is the jump to subroutine FFD5. So we have a look for it in here. So 32, 23, 213, 255. So that's the end of that original loader. And what we've now got, let's um, get rid of this text here, just to, uh, for extra clarity. This is the extra data that we, we need to incorporate. So 169514118116, that is our cheat code. I'm going to add in an extra line, 1110 data. And obviously we're going to put in commas here. We can get rid of the trailing, uh, sorry, the leading zeros. Put in the original, restore the original jump address here. But we also need to uh, make a, uh, an amendment here on the x equals. So we need to count up the, the data that we've got. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So let's try. 27. There's a very easy way to cut and paste, particularly using an editor if you're not wanting to type all of this in. So let's, uh, the, the trick though is you need to convert the text into lowercase for the emulator to accept it. And we're going to modify lines 80 onwards. Uh, it would help if we return control back to uh, the emulator. As you can see here, it's, it's all typed in. We're going to get rid of line 85 because we want to test first. Um, and we're going to delete the data that we just created to test that we've actually got our loader working as expected. So run, ah, out of data in line 80. So we've, um, we need to change this to 26, because obviously I forgot here, we're starting from zero rather than one to 27. So let's change that to 26. Okay, and now if we disassemble 100 to 120, we should have the new loader with our new code injected here. We can put in the back in the command sys256 for line 85, and now when we run it, We should now have infinite lives when we start. And there we have it. Not only have you now found infinite lives for Arcadia, but you've also created a basic loader for the original cassette. I mean, how simple was that? And, and thankfully for the VIC-20, things were only made difficult with the, the lack of 
uh, access to some of the tools. Um, so Vic Mon, I couldn't afford to do the hard way, peeking and poking and writing out code by hand that I couldn't afford a printer. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you've got any hints, tips, tricks, or ways to improve it, obviously, drop me a line in the comments, or you can find me at muckypaws.com. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time.